Welcome back, I'm Uploads and this is day 36 of my 50 day challenge. Yes, it's been a while since I've made a video. Even so, I've made patches and I've uploaded tracks to SoundCloud. So today I want to go over those. So we'll need to go back a few days. And this is day 33. I made a patch for a track that I called Pastorale um, because we have two instances of lambs uh, which is South Pole's version of sheep. Let's have a listen. Okay, so this was a, a quick patch. I didn't really have uh, the time after that to do a video explaining it. If I'd had more time, I'd probably investigated doing something more with the patch itself, like the rhythm. Um, there are no pauses. It's just an incessant stream of notes sometimes slower, sometimes a little faster. Anyway, this is what I made a few days ago. So, um, clock set to 52 BPM. We're using topograph, well, the micrograph. Um, from Valley. Uh, just one trigger that um, triggers clock of our Turing machine, one of my favorite modules. And the output of the Turing machine goes into the Scala quantizer, which quantizes it to, well, doesn't matter what it quantizes it to, because as I found out the next day, LAMS actually re-quantizes the input of the false per octave to equal temperament which is not what I want. So in uh, a later experiment, I've tried the, uh, the other sheep module that we have. But anyway, in this patch, there is this. So we have Scala Quantizer. The only thing it really does is uh, bring the octave down two octaves, the pitch down two octaves. Um, but then it's, it gets requantized here in LAMS. The output of LAMS goes to our low pass filter tangents and that goes here into a mono channel. We have some modulation here in the, the rhythm, uh, the map over topograph and the chaos parameter as well as the fill here. So how many notes um, it fills in a bar, so to say. And this is driven by our Lissajou LFO. As you can see here, set to move quite slowly. Nice thing here is also the amp dial, so it doesn't go all the way from minus 10 to plus 10 or from 0 to plus 10. And we have something that circles here around the middle. So uh, a rough guess is it's now minus 4 to plus 4 or something like that. Which is really nice, really helpful. Okay. Um, this output of the Turing machine goes into our offset to make it a bit lower. So not only does it go two octaves down in a scala quantizer, I want it three octaves down, but that's not possible in this module. So we add this very nice utility module offset from Bog Audio. Same setup here. Um, the row and column, well, mostly the column is a little bit different here. 
Uh, it also goes into a low pass filter, cutoff set even lower because this is our base line. Let's solo this one. Right? And this is the higher line. And together it's like this, plus a tidal our looping delay, also giving it some reverb and some stereo spread. And that is together a quite simple patch, but that's what I had time for a few days ago. All right, then after that, day 34, let's go there. That's July 1st. I did this. That looks interesting, but we don't hear a thing because it's still set to the bridge. So I could record it to Reaper. Okay, this I recorded and made a track called Under the Pine Tree, which I mixed together with a field recording sample of some birds singing in a pine forest in a preparation for what I made the next day, a track I wanted to make for the Navier Haiku, which included some line about pine trees. So what we did here is a drone. Also inspired by a discussion I'm having on the Ambient Online forums about what drone music really is and how we make good drones. Um, I want to put this forward as uh, a shining example of a good drone, but it's an experiment into drone music. A very static drone, except with some modulation. The modulation um, is visualized here very nicely, I think. Uh, what it shows here is the difference between the output of our wavetable oscillator here in sheet mode. Right? Tidal modulator used as a wavetable oscillator. So this, the next day, after my previous pastorale patch, I found out that it doesn't actually uh, take the pitch from a Scala, but it requantizes it. But this module, right, from Audible Instruments, sheep module, doesn't requantize the input. So, I've used here the quarter comma mean tone hexatonic Bavani like scale, which means it is a little bit closer to just intonation rather than equal temperament. So it should sound nice. Anyway, the scale doesn't really matter that much because as you can see, we have two nodes, one at 130 Hz and one at 234 Hz. It's just this interval. So we don't need a quantizer or anything. We just need a specific value to go into the input. And that's what we have. And then this one goes down one octave, and this one goes down two octaves. Um, so two sheep modules, wavetable oscillators. One goes through tangents and knobsgate. And this output goes into uh, this module, while the mono module of the mixer here has the non nobscated output. Let's listen to that. It's just the organy sound, which is like the one that I really like here in Sheep. 
and you can hear this is also being modulated. Right, we have quite a bit of modulation going on, the row and the column, so where in the wavetable we are. The smoothness, this is actually a filter. Plus we have here a low pass filter. We have the cutoff is being modulated as well as the resonance. And both by our Lissajou LFO at a quite slow pace, but it adds some nice modulation, I think. And then we have Nobscate, which adds a bit of distortion, really. So together you get this. And here we have the blend being modulated. All right, then we have this one is the output of tangents here, which takes its input from this sheep module, where we only have the row here being modulated slowly. A slow limited and uh, not too much but there's a little bit of modulation going on here and more modulation on the cutoff and the resonance of this filter and there you hear uh, the harmonics coming in the higher harmonics because the filter cutoff uh, is modulated to go higher and there it goes lower again okay so now some nice modulation here and then we also have this channel here which takes its output from oliverb which is fed by debriatus which takes its input also from this filter as you can see and that sounds like that. So the bass line, the bass note, uh, wave destructed, a bit of folding here, a bit of distortion, a bit of saturation, and both the distortion and the wave folding are modulated. Our modulation source is, well, this LFO. And then we add some things here. I also add a constant from here. And we have something more. Uh, this is the output into the slew limiter, which goes to this distortion and that resonance. We also have an ABC here, again taking two different LFOs as well, not three different LFOs. And then the output goes through a slew limiter to. Well, the wave folding here and the blend of knobskate there. And it also modulates the color of our visualization. Then we have, like the day before, retardo here, adding some reverb and stereo spread. And that's that patch, which I called under the pine tree. I don't think it's my most uh, interesting patch, although maybe the, the modulation can inspire somebody. I quite, I quite like this this visualization now. It uh, shows uh, the modulation changing the waveform. Of course, you can just go to the normal waveform. Then we have the Well, I don't know which the blue one and which the red one is supposed to be. But you can see them changing there. And in this Azure mode, it looks like that. Okay, that was day 34. Then day 35. More visualizations and you see some wilder sounds there. Oh, that 
That's definitely wilder. Okay, what's going on here? This is my track for the Navier Haiku, um, which I call the Voice of the Pines, which is the last line of the haiku. The haiku reads, when the Shikata sees what coolness, the Voice of the Pines. So I've looked for some field recordings of pine forests and of course you get a lot of breezes and wind and gales even, but that's only so interesting. Of course you can still do a lot of uh, white noise kind of stuff with it, but I also found a lot of samples of birds. So I took three small samples out of those field recordings of three different birds. Let's see if we can separate those things. Let's turn all this chaos off. Okay, so here we have Quad Simpler from Nisti, um, although I'm only using three of the uh, channels. Okay, so we have one um, sample here that sounds like this. And as you can see, the speed is heavily modulated, so we get all kinds of effects there. Then we have a second sample here. Again, modulated, and the output goes into this visualization as well as the third sample goes also into there. And that is a woodpecker sample, which I really like. And you get some great fun effects with that. And all these samples, the sample players have their speed modulated by Kaudal, and Kaudal is again modulated quite a bit by this LFO. I put a trigger here to uh, to stop, uh, if I put the gate here it stops the sample and then I need a trigger, but if I want, if I want to trigger them all at the same time I can use this, the manual trigger from Bogardio. Very nice. Okay, so that's our three bird samples. Then what else do we have going on? Well, we have Grain Osc, the grain oscillator from the Clear Factory. And this also has the woodpecker sample loaded, except I've uh, uh, you're taking a grain of it, just a very short sample of that sample. Plus I've tuned it down quite a bit. And then I modulate the grain size here, as well as the CV in, so the pitch. And together that gives some lovely effects, like this. And it has quite a dynamic range as well. And as visualized here, well, it actually mostly takes its output from the next module, the resonator, because the output from Granos goes into the resonator to add some harmonic content that sounds like this. And you can recognize this sample, but then there are the sympathetic strings because it is in sympathetic string mode. And 
and then here um, turn to red polyphony and this is also heavily modulated from either the uh, LFO here and some parts by Kaudal. So together the grain oscillator and the resonator I think give a lovely base to this uh, this patch. Adding back in the sample player we get all this fun stuff. And then to add more fun we send the output of everything we have so far this mix goes into two tangent modules for high pass filtering this time left and right channels and they go into plateau the uh, reasonably new reverb module from valley very lovely I'm using it here as a send so the output from here goes into tangents from tangents into plateau and then from plateau into this channel and that sounds like this yeah that is a lot a lot going on there I have it set to quite large size quite long decay and then I modulate several things in here so plateau is basically an instrument in its own right in this patch and together it obviously adds a lot of space and the whole patch becomes even wilder almost ominous and then again we add some really tired delay reverb stereo spread although it's much more subtle in this patch you see this barely registers oh it's because it's not on yeah but even now see it stays at one or two leads here while especially the grain oscillator goes up quite a bit and altogether I really like this this is probably my favorite patch from the week and I'm thinking of like doing more of this taking elements from here and making longer versions maybe we'll see especially the woodpecker sample is just lovely Yesterday, we had this discussion on the uh, Feasibly Rec official users group on Facebook. Um, the developer developer of um, Portland Weather was expressing his um, well disappointment with the uh, lukewarm reception of that enormous module that he obviously put a lot of work into. And that led uh, to, I think, a good discussion. Um, developers give us free modules, and we are very thankful for that. But on the other hand, there are also so many modules. And sometimes uh, there's modules that seem to fall between the cracks, especially the weirder ones or the less obviously usable ones like Portland weather 
So I um, mentioned this idea that I've been having in the back of my mind to organize some kind of contest, like uh, we have on KVR the one one synth challenge, and uh, there's the Navier Heiko, which I often take part in, and on the ambient online forums they have challenges that I like to take part in. So. I was thinking we need to do something like that for vsphere as well. And uh, this discussion about porn on weather sparked me into action. So yesterday I put up a challenge, which I call the Very Cool Patch Challenge. And obviously since it's been inspired uh, by Portland weather, the first module for this patch challenge is Portland weather. So if you want to take part, go to the uh, official users group on Facebook. I've also posted it on Reddit in the VSphereX subreddit with the rules for this challenge. And uh, then today I started working on my own patch using Portland weather and I discovered why a lot of people can't use it. Okay, here it is. Portland weather, as you see, covers a double row of modules. It's that big, which of course works fine in the virtual rack. Um, but like I already mentioned on Facebook, it looks intimidating, doesn't it? Like, what is going on here? What do I need to do with all these inputs? So it's not an easy to use module like an LFO or something that you can see, ah, oh, this is doing this, that is doing that, so I can use it immediately. This is something you need to look into. How does it work? So it's, it needs some experimenting, which is what I'm doing really with this challenge. So I should have looked at this earlier on, I think. But anyway, I've been putting it off, but today I finally tried it out. And it is amazing. It is an amazing module that has a lot of possibility. So it is basically a delay, but saying it's a delay just doesn't do it justice. Um, the way I've used it in my patch, let's see if we can get it going. Of course not, because it's still set to bridge. Ah, and you can hear it's glitching. So yeah, when I start this patch up, I always need to uh, let it settle. And if I make some changes again, I need to let it settle. Um, you can see here, the power meter, that it's taking a lot of power, right? 700 millisamples, which uh, really starves our audio module. Although this is a level it should be able to handle. But yeah, when it gets under, say, 150, then you get these glitches. Obviously, now I'm adding to it with uh, recording this thing. So maybe it won't settle at all. It's still doing this glitchy thing. Okay, as you can see, I've muted several of the taps here. I've had a, a one, one, two, two, three taps here um, with different levels, different panning. I haven't touched the filters. Uh, I did touch some of the pitch here. So turn some of them down, some of them up. But you can't really hear the proper result of this. I 
even if we mute Portland weather, it still keeps glitching. Maybe if we uh, undo the clock. No, that's still glitching all the way. It was a blue one. I like to keep uh, my color coding more or less. Well, I like to keep my colors coded, let's say that. So this is clock here is both blue and here yellow for left and red for right. But well, that's just my tiny bit of OCD. Anyway, the idea here is we have a topograph in its micro edition running with an external clock so that I can have a steady clock for Portland weather as well. 245 bits per minute with a little bit of swing here. And then we are going through the map with some LFO here. We are going and modulating the chaos parameter as well. And some of the fills here. So there's a lot of modulation already going on here. But this module doesn't break a sweat. The LFO uses a little bit more power. And we have one of the parameters in our LFO modulated by the output of our Turing machine. And from our Turing machine, we go into Anuli, the resonator. We have one here. Uh, we have the odd and even output from the polyphony going into a left and right channel, although I haven't hard panned them, but still somewhat panned. So you get this nice effect here. And then the damping and the position are modulated here, so the sound changes. Uh, we have the faults output from the Turing machine going in here. And then we have our middle module here. It's that one. There's a higher voice that takes the main output from uh, the Turing machine. Also lots of modulation here, not breaking a sweat. And uh, a third one for a bass voice. And then the output of all that um, is sent from here to Portland Weather. And the output for Portland Weather goes back into our mixer, but not into the uh, OAK send. And this is as far as I could push my machine without glitching before recording this mess. And anytime I would try to dial in some filter or add some modulation, it was glitch galore. So I decided not to do that and just keep it simple. But with OBS running at the same time and recording the sound, it's still glitching. So it's really on the edge of the capabilities of my box. If you want to hear what it actually sounds like, go to SoundCloud, um, soundcloud.com slash Tualba, and then find my latest, well, it's today is my latest. If you're watching this tomorrow, it might not be my latest anymore. Anyway, go find um, the track that I called Rainy Day. And maybe we can listen to it if we just turn off. Turn off uh, VCV Rack completely. Yeah, you can hear.
hear that, right? So that's what it sounds like without glitches. And I've added a tiny bit of reverb in Reaper uh, after recording this VRAC. I think it's uh, quite a nice patch, but yes, I would like to do a lot more modulation, and that is just simply not possible without a beefier computer. So I totally understand all those people say, well, I would love to use Portland weather, but the weather conditions are not good. Maybe if uh, we get VSphereRack 1.0 with more uh, performance tuning optimization, we will be able to do more, but this is it right now. Anyway. I hope you enjoyed uh, the explanations of my patches that I've been doing the last few days. Um, so please like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, check back in tomorrow or in a few days for my next VCV rack experiments.